We're going to start a new series this morning. Uh, our text for the series is Luke 9, 23 through 26 that was read this morning. And we're going to have a, several lessons uh, out of this. And this morning is just kind of, a, of, of an introduction to that. So, Ignatius of Antioch was a follower of Jesus and tradition tells us that he was discipled by the Apostle John. Tradition also tells us that he violated the imperial edict uh, to worship false gods and he refused to do so. And because he refused to do so, he was arrested and then led before the Emperor Trajan around AD 107, 108, something along those lines. After boldly speaking in the name of, of Jesus uh, in front of the emperor, he was, public, he was condemned to be publicly devoured by lions in the Colosseum at Rome. I mean, can you even imagine? But the time between his sentencing and his execution, he wrote seven letters. Five of those letters went to different churches in the area, encouraging them to, uh, to live for Jesus and, and to, to be bold, to continue to be bold in their faith. The fifth letter, or excuse me, the sixth letter was written to a friend of his, Polycarp, who was also uh, discipled by the Apostle John and was later executed for his faith. And the last letter was written to the Christians at Rome, encouraging them to not stop his execution. And in that letter, he wrote these words, I am the wheat of the Lord. May I be ground by the teeth of the beast to become the immaculate bread of Christ. And he continues, let fire and the cross, let the crowds of wild beasts, let tearings, breakings, and dislocations of bones, let cutting off of members, let shatterings of the whole body, and let all the dreadful torments of the devil come upon me. Only let me attain to Jesus Christ. What a faith. What a faith. To Ignatius and to other, many other first and, first and second century Christians, following Jesus was a matter of life and death. Ignatius knew that his faith in Christ could ultimately lead to his death, and it did, and he was willing to allow that to happen. But he knew in reality that following Jesus is the only way to live life. It's the best way to live life. And his life was given because of that. Now there's a high probability, probably 100%, that you and I are not going to give our life because of our faith in Jesus. It's possible, but not very probable at this time. But we have died with Christ. We may not give our life in, in death, but we have died with Christ. Paul tells us we know that our old self is crucified with him. Romans 6 and verse 6. Galatians 2 and verse 20 says, I've been crucified with Christ. Those who follow Jesus also choose to die with him so that we can present ourselves as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. Romans chapter 12 and verse 1. So what does it mean to live for and to follow after Christ? Luke 9 and verse 23, that was read just a minute ago, in our scripture reading, is probably one of the clearest and most challenging verses in all of the New Testament about what it means and what it looks like to live for and follow after Jesus. Jesus makes it very plain and very clear that being a disciple of his is a matter of life and death, but it's also a matter of death to life. When he says, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. Following Jesus isn't about adding him into the already messy chaos of our life and just continuing life as usual and living the way that we want to. 
Adding Jesus into our life or following him isn't about listening to, to Christian music and acknowledging his existence, using Bible words and going to worship on Sundays. Following Jesus is a life-altering process. It's a life-altering process. It ought to be anyways. It's the process of investigating him and who he is. It's the process of, of studying his teachings, following in love with him, uh, uh, acknowledging his lordship, placing our trust in him by putting his teachings into practice day by day. It, it's, it's, it's him consuming our life. Following Jesus is about submitting to his lordship, handing over our very existence to him so that he can redeem us and give us a meaningful and abundant life. And sometimes not the way that we think it's meaningful and abundant. So that you and I can live a life without fear, a life free of worry, empowered so that we can share Jesus with the world. And Jesus' statement here in Luke 9 and verse 23, it's a conditional statement. It's a statement that he says, if you want to do this, then you're going to have to follow through with this. If you want this as part of your life, these are the conditions to this. These are the conditions that have to be met. If anyone would come after me, then he must deny himself, take up his cross daily, and then follow me. We're going to give a, a great amount of attention to these and some following lessons. Not, not today. Today's just kind of an introduction. But we're going, to, we're going to discuss these at length in the coming weeks. And I think there's more to what Jesus says than sometimes what we're willing to realize or even, even process through. And I wrote in the margin of my Bible out at Luke 9 and verse 23, <clears throat> then why follow Jesus? If this is what it looks like, if I had to deny myself, if I had to take up my cross daily and follow him, if this is what it looks like, why would anybody be willing to do so? This is uncomfortable. This is life changing. This is life altering. This is not something that you just add into the mix. This changes everything <clears throat> about your life and the way that you live it. The way you respond to people, the way you process things, the way you react, this changes everything. The way you view people, the way you fundamentally approach life, everything is changed. So why do it? Well, Jesus answers that question in the following verses. He doesn't answer it like, yes, it is worth it. I mean, that would be easy. And that's not the way. Jesus rarely does things the easy way. Jesus always words things a, a little bit different so that you and I have to go, what does he mean by that? And, and so we have to, his answers cause us to reflect for a moment and process this. And kind of weigh the, the options here. And then we go, we reach the, the proper conclusion. We go, wow, he is worth it. It is worth changing your life. It is worth allowing the spirit to come in and just consume you and, and throw it and kick everything out of your life that doesn't need to be there and filling it up with himself. And so here Jesus' answer, is it worth following him? Jesus says yes, but he says it like this. Here's three reasons why. If you try to save your life, you're going to lose it. But if you'll lose your life in me, you'll find it. That's his first yes answer. If you try to save your life, you'll die trying, is what he says. If you follow your desires, the end of that road is what? Death. But when you decide to give up your prideful in your arrogant tendencies and the way that you approach life and you submit yourself uh, to him, Jesus says that is when you will truly figure out what life is about and what it's like. Then will your life be 
fulfilled. Not until then. And so Jesus says, we ask the question, is it worth it? He says, yes, because if you try to save your life, you'll lose it. But if you lose your life in me, you'll find it. His second yes looks like this. There is no profit in gaining everything if you're going to lose yourself. There's no profit in gaining everything that you ever wanted, everything you've ever dreamed of, everything that you think is going to give your life meaning and purpose and value, if you gain all of that, but you lose your own soul, you have made absolutely nothing of your life. If you make this life about earthly gain and earthly treasure, the things that the world says is of value, if your identities and the job that you have, the truck that you drive, the, the, the spot you are on the sports team, the clothes that you wear, if all of that is about your life, is that what you make your life about? Jesus says that moth and rust destroy and thieves break in and steal. All of that's going to be gone. At some point, all of that's going to be gone. And not only is everything you've ever thought was important going to be gone, but Jesus says you'll lose your soul too. So everything will be taken from you. You will lose everything. But the opposite of that is true. If Jesus is everything to you, you gain everything of meaning and value. Spiritually speaking, here's, here's his third yes. When I return, whoever is ashamed of me, I will be ashamed of him. If you don't follow Jesus, if you don't make him your life, if you don't put everything that you have into pursuing him, Jesus says, when I return, I will be ashamed of you because you've been ashamed of me. We will hear those words. I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. Matthew 7 and verse 23. Jesus makes it clear that following him leaves little to no room for self. And as we listen to these yes answers, and we stop and we reflect, because Jesus' answers are meant for us to sit there and chew on them for a minute, and to meditate on these. And to, to take them to its very end. If this is what Jesus is saying, and this is what Jesus means, then this is the way that it's going to play out in my life. That's what he's wanting us to do. Jesus doesn't want to give us just the simple yes answer. He wants to give us, here's why. Think on it for a minute. Count the cost, Luke 14. That's what he wants. And so he tells us, Here's why the answer is yes. Here's why it's worth it. And when we stop and we really process this, we go, wow. It's worth denying myself. Following Jesus is worth taking up my cross daily and follow after him, following after him. Not just here and there, but with my life completely and wholly every day of my existence. And so I ask, is your life all about Jesus or is it all about you? Following Jesus demands a complete reorientation of your life. Jesus teaches us everything that we thought was important isn't what's really important. And everything that we thought really didn't have that much of a value is everything that is very much of value to us or should be if you claim to follow Jesus what is your life really about is it about him or is it about you what do you value in life the things that appeal to your your desires in your flesh or the things that are going to heal you spiritually Paul told the Christians at Rome he says for none of us lives to himself and none of us dies to himself for if we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So whether we live or we die, we are the Lord's. And the sooner we learn that our life belongs to Jesus, whether we follow him or not, it makes this concept of denying self and picking up our cross daily and following him a whole lot easier 
than maybe what we thought it would be. Doesn't mean it's going to be easy all the time. It makes the choice and the decision to follow after him not so difficult. Because we begin to see what's of true value and meaning. And it's not about me and my desires. But after I begin to follow Jesus, something very strange happens. The things that I desired and liked beforehand change. And I start to desire and want the things of God. That's the power of the Spirit in our life. I may never have to sacrifice myself bodily. Meaning I may never stare death in the face as a follower of Jesus, but I have to die with him every day. Paul said, if you have died with him, you will also live with him. 2 Timothy 2 and verse 11. Don't ignore the life that Jesus is calling you to embrace. It's not easy. But it, it's the best life possible. And the more you live it, and the more you walk by faith and not by sight, I think it does get a little easier. Because my desires become God, or no, let me put it the other way. God's desires become my desires. That's the right way to say that. <laughs> I would have just voided everything I said this morning. But <laughs> God's desires become my desires. <laughs> I'm excited about these lessons. I'm excited what God has in store for us, because these are just, uh, 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 this text is is short, and the, and the words of Jesus, though, are very, very powerful. And I hope together, as we have these studies over the next several weeks, my desire is that together, as a family of God, we fall deeper in love with Jesus in His way of life and what He's calling us to do in the way that we pattern ourselves in showing Him to the world and making Him real and visible to everyone else. I want to live for Jesus with the same tenacity and the same ferocity that Ignatius possessed. I want to trust Jesus with the same unwavering faith as Ignatius so that I can stare death in the face and say, so be it. If that's what it means, then so be it. And I think you do too. So my plan is for us to camp out here in Luke 9, 23 through 26 for the next, uh, for, for uh, March and April and take a good look at what Jesus says and what it means to follow him. Because I want all of us to be able to agree with Ignatius who wrote in one of his letters, it's not that I want merely to be called a Christian. In other words, I don't want to just that be a name. I don't want it to just be a label. He says, but I want to actually to be one. Yes, if I prove to be one, then I can wear the name. And so many people want to wear the name and then sometimes, when it's convenient, when my desires coincide with God's desires, then I'll be one. And Ignatius says, I want it to be the other way around. I want to be one so that I'm worthy of the name of Christ. Do you wear the name of Jesus? If you do, is it name only? Or do you wear his name because you're truly a follower? And you are denying yourself, taking up your cross daily, and you're following after him. If you don't wear the name of Christ, if you don't consider yourself a follower of Jesus, why not become one? The body of Christ here will help you and show you and teach you what it means to be a follower of Jesus and help you fall in love with him. If you're ready to wear the name of Christ, you can become a child of God this morning by repenting of your sins, being baptized into Jesus, for the forgiveness of those sins, where you will find every spiritual blessing that the Father has to offer. And you'll find yourself 
redeemed from the power of sin and headed to the promised land. I don't know what your need is this morning. I don't know what you're struggling with. I don't know where you're at uh, in your walk with God. But if you need help, we would love to help you. If you don't need help, come help me because I need it. And whatever your need is this morning, please come forward while we stand and while we sing.